my brothers and sisters in Christ, when something like that happens to us, mm -hmm. we can have a whole a range of emotions. Right. But one of the things that Jesus is trying to teach the disciples and to teach us tonight is to not be afraid mm -hmm. with what he has entrusted to mm -hmm. us. To not be afraid with the tremendous mission right. to save lives and to save souls and to bring light and life to the world that has been entrusted to us. Amen. Because it's very easy to be fearful and think, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This is way bigger than I should be in charge of. Are you sure you got the right answer? <laughs> but Jesus is asking us not to respond with fear, mm -hmm. but to respond with faith. Mm -hmm. To live a life of gratitude and faith. So let's dive into tonight's gospel lesson. Setting the context, because it's always important to understand the context as what's going on here. Remember, we are in this uh, story and this movement of Matthew. Uh, we have already gone through the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus has gone to the temple. And remember, whenever you ask the question, what would Jesus do? Turning over tables and whipping people is entirely within the realm of possibilities there as he cleansed the temple. But he also had the arguments with the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Herodians. And he has then taken his disciples from the Temple Mount, and they've gone up onto the Mount of Olives. He's shared with them the Beatitudes. He's been teaching them on the Mount of Olives. And then they've been asking him this question of, when will the Messiah come? When will the justice of God rain down? And Jesus' answer essentially has always been, it's not for me to know and it's not for you to know. Only your Father in Heaven knows. It's your job to be prepared at all times. And so last week we went through the parable of the ten bridesmaids, the five foolish ones and the five wise ones, talking about how can we be wise for those times when Christ is coming into this world. Because we're not just talking about the very end time when Christ is coming to this world, but when Christ comes to us in the person who needs to hear a gospel message. When Christ comes to us in the person who needs some sort of care or concern or food or anything else in their life. When we meet Christ in our death and that end time when we'll all stand before the Lord. So Jesus was talking about being wise and ready at that time, and then immediately moves then into tonight's gospel lesson. And Jesus says to his disciples and to us, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. And that whole little bit, don't worry, you're not in charge. <laughs> It is as if General Nicholson is calling any one of you out of the blue and saying, I'm going away, you're in charge for a while. This is very unusual. And some of the things we need to learn and remember about in these parables is we have to understand the context of what's going on. The disciples would be listening to this and going, whoa, that's weird. A master who is going away for some undetermined amount of time, normally would have a manager or something like that in charge of things. Instead, he decides to put these slaves in charge of the property. Now, the word that is used there for slaves is probably better translated as indentured servants. And an indentured servant in that day and age is someone somehow became indebted to another person. And so, because they would not have the wealth to pay off that debt, they would work for that person to pay off that debt. And so eventually they would work off that debt, and they would be free to move on in whatever they are. But they refer to them as slaves, and, but the, the Greek term here is probably better indentured servant. So, 
the master is entrusting these indentured servants to run the house and the mission of the house and the business of the house and everything else like that while he is away. And maybe that's our first learning in today's gospel lesson, that Jesus is preparing the disciples and wanting to share with us as well that we need to be in charge of caring about our master's property. We are the indentured servants. We owe God a tremendous amount. Our life, our time, our talent, our treasures, our families, our friends, this beautiful world, and on and on and on and on. And so we owe God a lot. God has come to us and freed us from our sin. Right. Has told Satan, not today. Not today. <laughs> has forgiven us, claimed us as His own. But Jesus has ascended to heaven and said, you guys are in charge down here for a little while. I'm going to entrust the mission and the ministry of the church to you. Remember what He said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. That rock, that flesh, that broken clay pot that each and every single one of us is. We are in charge of that mission and that ministry. Human beings are being asked by God to share the gospel message, to spread that message throughout the world, to proclaim Jesus Christ as born, crucified, raised from the dead, and coming again. To bring light into the lives of those who have no hope. That is a tremendous mission and ministry and work. Way more important than the mission of resolute support. So, if you got a little bit shaky with the thought that General Nicholson might point at you and say, You're in charge, I'm gone. God has said... You're in charge. Right. You are entrusted with the most powerful gift, the most important mission and ministry in all of this world. The most important to each and every single one of you. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> So Jesus is sharing with his disciples and sharing with us this idea that the mission and ministry is entrusted to them. It's entrusted to us. Now then, goes on to say, to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. And we kind of, again, get lost on the context of that because because we were all oh, five, two, one, that's no big deal. Captain Paul, what would you do with I gave you six million dollars? <laughs> right? Person who received five talents received about six million US dollars. John, what would you do with $2.3 million? I have a lot of Starbucks. <laughs> More Starbucks than anyone can consume in their life. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a good question. I'd probably try to start a new deal or something. Two talents. Two talents. $2.3 million. One talent. 1.2 million dollars. That is nothing to sneeze at, my friends. So, interestingly enough, again, the disciples are thinking to themselves, whoa, this is one weird master. <laughs> He's leaving and giving the slaves charge of all of the, the mission and the property and everything else like that. And oh, by the way, these indentured servants who owe the master... The master hands over to them this incredible amount of money to them. 
each according to their own ability. I love that phrase, each according to their own ability. And here's something that we have trouble understanding in our modern age. So math in public, 5, 2, and 1 is 8. And we would initially say, okay, well, why didn't you just split it up equally between those three? <coughs> according to their own ability. Mm -hmm. We hear those stories all the time, especially in the United States, of, of someone who wins the lottery, and all of a sudden $500 million are in their life, and they have no ability to deal with it. Within a year, they're addicted to something, their family's fighting all each other for some, for some money, the money's probably already all gone, and their life is exceedingly worse off than beforehand. They weren't ready to deal with that. And so when this is shown to us, that each one is given to their own ability, we also have to recognize that none of these endangered servants had any claim to that money. It was never theirs to begin with. In fact, they owed the, ask, the master money. And so it is by the graciousness alone of the Master that it is given to them. And so the disciples have to be thinking to themselves, this is one weird Master, but I wouldn't mind working for him. He's given me charge of all of his lands and everything else like that. And, oh, by the way, as he's gone away, he's given me a tremendous amount of money. brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the Lord that we serve, who has graciously given to us more than we deserve, more than we deserve, graciously given to us and entrusted his mission and his ministry to us. Jesus says, then he went away. And there's an indeterminate amount of time there. He's not going away for a, a season or anything else like that. He's just gone and away. Now notice what happens right away. The one who received the five talents went off at once. At once. And traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. I want us to focus in on the at once. The slaves, the indentured servants are trusted immediately with the, the mission of the property. They're given this extravagant amount of money. And what do the first two do? They recognize the graciousness of that gift. And in thanksgiving and wanting to do something with that, they immediately go out and start working with it and start using it and start increasing it at once. My brothers and sisters in Christ, each and every single moment, each and every single day that God blesses us with is an opportunity to use the talents that God has given us at once for the mission and spread of God's word, of God's love into the lives of those who have not heard a message of hope, who have not heard a message of salvation, who cannot claim with boldness, not today, Satan. And so at once, we have that opportunity each and every day it's easy sometimes to fall into disdaining that gift that God gives us of each new day. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will confess before you that I do it sometimes too. It's Groundhog Day. <laughs> we have to resist that now. Each day is a blessing. Each day is an opportunity. Each day is filled with the grace that we do not deserve. And each day is an opportunity to at once, immediately, use 
our talents and the gifts that God has given us for the spread of His kingdom. But the one who received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, Jesus is wanting to let the, the disciples know that this is not 10 years, this is not 20 years. We're not going to tell you the date that the Messiah is coming again. We're not going to tell you when that untime is. But every day of your life, as you live it, you need to be ready. After a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, and good, worthy, and well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the same thing happens with the one who had two talents. How many of you have kids? Okay, a fair, fair amount. Fair amount. Tell me if this is true. If you have one crayon and one plain piece of paper, and you hand that to your child, and go away for a little while, at some point, they will come to you and say, Mom, Dad, come look at what I did. Come see what I did. Right? Even if it's one crayon and one piece of paper. If you hand them a thousand crayons and a thousand pieces of paper, that same kid is still going to come to you at some point and say, Mom, Dad, come see what I made. Come see what I did with what you gave me. These two, these first two, are like those kids. And they come and make account with the Master. They are immediately going to Him and boldly proclaiming the things that they have done with the talents that they have been given. In fact, they said, See, I've made five more talents. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when it is our time to go before our master, when we're standing there before the pearly gates, are we going to be there with a smile? Are we going to be happy? Are we going to be going there saying, See, Dad, look at what I did with what you gave me. Look at what I did with the talents that you gave me. Let me tell you, Lord, all of the people that we touched, all of the lives that have been changed, all of the hearts that have come to know you, all of the good people that have been fed and cared for, all of those that I cried with along the way. Lord, let me tell you what I did, the talents that you gave me. Just like a little kid. And it doesn't matter whether they have one crayon, one piece of paper, or a thousand crayons, or a thousand pieces of paper. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let me tell you the truth. As a, as a pastor, as someone who's been you know, twisting arms of people to come volunteer in the church for a long time, <laughs> give me one faithful person with one talent, and I can change the world rather than some person who's got ten talents and wants to hide it from God. Mm -hmm. One faithful person, one talent, who's willing to use it for the spread of the gospel message for God's kingdom, mm -hmm. and I can change the world. Mm -hmm. Rather than ten people with ten talents each, who are trying to bury it and hide it away from God. Then mm -hmm. the one who had received the one talent, also came forward and saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was 
afraid. I was afraid. Yeah, it's a big mission. Yeah, it's a big ministry. Yeah, it's a big ask to say, God wants you to change people's lives. God wants you to save people. God wants you to feed people. God wants you to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to visit people in prison, to help the homeless. God wants you to speak into the lives of people who have nothing but darkness in their lives. Yeah, it is a big ask. God has given you all that you need to do that. Remember, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. And you have enough talent in your life to do the mission that has been entrusted to you. Yes. When we're standing before those pearly gates, are we happy to tell God what we've done with the talents? Or are we going to be afraid? Because we've hidden them in the ground. And we say, here's what's yours. That's it. His master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. You wicked and lazy slave. This particular slave received one talent, but received also the, all of the benefits of living in the master's house of participating in the Master's economy, of receiving all of the good gifts from the Master. And he, met, he went away and he buried the one talent. And for this entire time that the Master was gone, did nothing. Did nothing with it. How many times... Do we hide our talents from God? How many times do we bury those? How many times do we say, not today, I'll get to it tomorrow. Not today, I'll get to it tomorrow. Not today, I'll get to it tomorrow. And maybe we even forget that that talent's there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do not want to live a life that forgets the mission and talent that has been given to us. Interesting, the way the Master is described. The way the Master is described. I think of this as gracious. I think of this as wonderful. The way the Master is described is I reap where I did not sow, and I gather where I did not scatter. Mm -hmm. I reap where I did not sow, and I gather where I did not scatter. If we think maybe that what God has sown into the world is the, the children of Israel, He is going to reap us Gentiles, even though he didn't sow us mm. or scatter us. I think that's maybe an interesting thing that Jesus is sliding in. Saying that the Master is going to gather up all of those people and this great harvest. And maybe even those that we don't expect. Mm. Yeah. Maybe even those that he has given talents to mm. and gifts and abilities to that are using it for the glory of God's kingdom mm -hmm. that we might not even know about. Mm -hmm. I just find that that is mm -hmm. an amazing way to describe God. Mm -hmm. That one who is reaping where he did not sow and gathering where he did not sow. Mm -hmm. But rightly so, the master is angry. Because he's thinking to himself, I've been gone for a while and all you did was put that talent in the ground. You could have at least put it in the bank and I could have gotten some interest <laughs> along with it. 
Now my talent is worth less. It is atrophied and gone away. Think about the talents that God has given you. It's interesting that the Bible uses the term talents and we use the term talent in English. Mm -hmm. Think about the talents that God has given you. Maybe you've buried that. Maybe you haven't looked at it or worked with it in a while. It's going to atrophy. It's going to fall away. You're not going to be able to reach in and use it the same way that you used to. We need to constantly be using the talents that God has given to us. So what are the talents that God has given to us? Just off the top, every single one of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, Christians, each and every single one of you has been forgiven. Amen. A tremendous weight of sin has been lifted off each and every single one of you. And each of you have been given the ability by God to forgive. The ability by God to forgive. Again, one of those things. Hey, General Nicholson's calling. He wants you to be in charge. That's a big deal, my friends. The ability to forgive as you are forgiven. Freedom from sin. Freedom from death. Freedom from the devil. The promise of salvation and living in the kingdom to come. And oh, by the way... The creator of the universe, the sustainer of the universe, has said, you have a direct line to me anytime you want. Hey, anytime. Anytime. That's an amazing gift. You have been given the guidance by the Holy Spirit. Think about these particular indentured servants here. The, the master went away and there seemed to be no direction or communication. That's not our master. He's talking to you every single day. He's passing on notes. He's speaking in the voice of brothers and sisters in Christ. He's giving you the scriptures to give you all the wisdom that you need. He's got the Holy Spirit coming into your lives and inspiring you on a regular basis. So you're getting all the guidance that you need. If we have ears that will listen. <laughs> He's given you the family of Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the living body of Christ, all of you gathered in this place, all of your brothers and sisters all around the world who are there to support you, to pray for you, to lift you up when you've fallen, to proclaim forgiveness to you, to work with you, to be co-laborers in the field. Each and every single one of us has been given all of those gifts and talents. But individually, we each have our own testimony of what God has done, continues to do, and promises to do in each of our own lives. Each of us has given, been given different spiritual gifts, whether it's prophecy, or teaching, or exhortation, or giving, or leadership, or mercy. And even more than that, God has given us individual talents. Who's good at math? No one? <laughs> there we go. We got one good at math. Good at language, sciences, understanding the world, speaking to others, music, dance, all of those different gifts skills and ability that make you unique, that bear the unique thumbprint of God on your life. All of those little gifts. You've been given way more. Way more. Way more than five talents. You've been entrusted with way more than a master's plot to take care of. You've been entrusted with way more than the RS mission. You've been entrusted with the mission of God and the mission of 
the church. And you've been given all the talents that you can possibly need to be good workers in that mission. Way more than five talents. Way more than a thousand crayons and a thousand mm -hmm. pieces of paper. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, my prayer for you this day is that you don't respond with fear to that tremendous mission that's been given to you. But respond with gratitude and say, Lord, you've given me everything I need. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go out at once, now, to be about that mission. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes, when you're standing before our Lord, your Father who is in heaven, you'll run up to him and say, Look, Dad. Look, Dad. Mm -hmm. Look what I did for you. Tonight, there you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sum it up with this song. Some of you know this song from Sunday school or other things like that. Church camps. We're going to sing this song together. <coughs> Do you have music? Do you want to play some music for that? No? No. Yeah. Have some music. We'll sing it Acapulco style and make a joyful noise to the Lord.
I am overjoyed to say that we are going to be starting the Star Wars series of movies. <laughs> uh, starting this Thursday night, we're actually going to start with Rogue One, which is kind of Star Wars three and a half. We're going to skip those first three and pretend they never happened. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to show the series of movies because on December the 23rd, the CEO of AFES is going to be bringing to us the brand new Star Wars movie that is coming out uh, this year in the middle of December. So about a week after it hits the theaters back in the States, uh, we'll have a year to show on Thursday night. So we want to show those moving up to us. I know people are like, man, I need to reschedule my R&R &R now. <laughs> You're going to the States, you can see it. <laughs> You want to make a joyful noise to the Lord? I heard you all singing. Please come and, and join our choir practices on Friday and Saturday night at 16. Men's Bible study again. John was sharing with it us. Uh, um, that is at 7 o'clock on Saturday evenings here at chapel. Yeah. As usual, 4 o'clock Monday through Friday and 5 o'clock on Sunday, uh, Padre PT. Trivia. This Friday is Trivia Night at 8.15, and uh, it's trivia with either an Australian or British accent. Yes, British accent. Incomprehensible British accent. <laughs> Sit at a table with a bread so they can translate for you. <laughs> Thanksgiving uh, is going to be this uh, Thursday. Um, just Briefly, um, many, many Americans think of Thanksgiving as kind of dating back to Native Americans and pilgrims and, and all of this other stuff. And while um, that was kind of the impetus of the very first Thanksgiving, it was only regionally practiced and only occasionally uh, during the time. Uh, George Washington made a Thanksgiving proclamation when he was president of the United States. Uh, and that was, again, something that was not practiced necessarily every single year. Our modern day Thanksgiving that the United States practices dates back to Abraham Lincoln. And following the bloodiest battle in the American Civil War, when more Americans were killed in a single day than any other battle we've ever had, very shortly after that is when Abraham Lincoln said, we need to have a day to give thanks to God. And many people in his cabinet questioned him about that. He said, We've, we're, we are at war with each other. We're in this great civil war. Brother fighting brother. Family against family. And we just had this horrible battle where more Americans have died than ever before. How can we just pause to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? Abraham Lincoln's response is, while we yet have breath, we will give thanks to God. While we yet have breath, we will give thanks to God. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, remember to give thanks to God for all of the gifts and talents that he's given to you, especially on this Thursday as you're overloading on apple pie or pumpkin pie. Um, did you want to say anything about dance for Christmas Eve? Yes. Oh, oh. Um, so if there's anybody who's interested in praise dancing, we're trying to do a praise uh, dance routine for uh, the Christmas Eve service. So if you'd like to, just kind of like sing a joyful noise, if you'd like to dance a little joyful tune with your feet or whatever, um, please come and see me. Um, start from scratch, even if you've never danced before. It's all good. It's all about... Uh, uh, the movements are giving glory to God. That's, that's what it is. That's what praise dance is. So um, if you're interested, please be so mad at the way you say. You've got six weeks to work on that. So plenty of time. Plenty of time. Please give them Captain Paul. Or if you know anybody that wants to do that, please have them. Um, we're going to decorate the chapel for Christmas, and we're, we're going all out. We've bought a whole bunch of brand new wreaths. We've got a nine-foot tree that's coming. We've got a bunch of decorations that are coming. 
We've got lights that are going to go on the trees outside over there. So on the 1st of December, we're going to be decorating the chapel. It's a Friday. A lot of people aren't advising or have time on, and we'll have time on Friday. So on the 1st of December in the morning will be the, the pancake feed that happens here every first Friday of the month. But after that pancake feed, uh, we're going to get together and we're going to decorate the chapel for the upcoming Christmas season. Uh, on the 13th of December, also, we're going to have an Advent craft festival. And there's going to be a couple of different ornaments that we're going to make there. One of them is a traditional Danish ornament that our Danish chaplain has got uh, coming. And it's kind of a folded paper ornament. Uh, it's kind of origami-esque, but it makes a star. And uh, she's going to teach us how to do that. She's also bringing a Danish dessert. And uh, the, there's a Danish orchestra that is going to be coming and playing for us that night as well on the 13th. Uh, one, I don't know what a Danish orchestra is any other than any other orchestra, but maybe they have food. So. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the other thing, the other ornament that we're going to have is so we've ordered a bunch of these clear plastic balls and we'll have um, the ability to uh, print onto paper up here and, and have uh, basically a lot, have the ability for people to take family photos and print them on these paper and put them in these clear plastic balls and you can hang a picture of your family on the Christmas tree in a way, celebrate Christmas together out here. Uh, so that'll be on the 13th. Uh, again, uh, Christmas Eve is on Sunday, the 24th here. Uh, and then on Christmas Day, the 25th, we're going to have the chapel open all day and we're going to be showing Christmas movies all day long on Christmas Day as well. Uh, so that's just a glimpse of what's coming around. So please stand and receive the benediction of the Lord. And now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go into the world with gladness. Serve God. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Amen. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. You are the one who is